today we're going to talk about installing a thermostat on a normal system. That's a gas, oil, propane, or electric, non-heat pump. The first thing we're going to talk about is some of the tools that we need, or are going to need, to install this thermostat. The first one you're going to need is a small screwdriver. You're also going to need a pencil or pen or some marking instrument to mark where we're going to put our new holes for the new thermostat. We're going to need a drill or an awl to make a pilot hole to install the Molly. Next, you'll need an optional level. The next thing we need to talk about is safety. First off, we want to make sure that we remove all power to the thermostat. Even though this is a low voltage device, it's very important for the, your safety and to make sure that there's no damage done to the system to turn off the power. Being that it's a conventional system, if it's forced air, meaning it has a fan on it, if you take and you turn the fan on on your current thermostat, then when you go to your circuit breaker box and you turn off the circuit breaker, if it's not marked, you can audibly hear the fan turn off. At that point, you know you have the correct circuit breaker for the system. Even though we've made sure the power's off at the main system, Notice that the display on the thermostat may not always power down. The thermostat itself may have batteries backing up the power to the thermostat. That's okay. We just want to make sure we have the main system powered off. Then we simply take off the front part. Now, your thermostat may be different than this. It may contain more than one layer to get down to the wires. So take off the face of the thermostat in our case, it's only one layer. Some of the older round ones require you take off two layers before you get down to where the wires are. At this time, I also like to note that on some thermostats, there are two sets of wire designators. As you can see on this one, there's one side that has one meaning, as in here it says O slash B, and on the other side, it has a W. On conventional system, we will not have an O or a B because that's for a heat pump. On conventional system, we'll have a W. So it's not which side the wires go in. They'll always go in this side, but this will be for conventional. This will be for heat pump. That's not in every system. Check your manual to see what you have. Now that we have the face plate off and we've exposed the wires, we want to one at a time remove the wires. Now, I've already removed the yellow wire from the Y. Now make note also, the color of the wire is not necessarily going to go into the same spot. The Y may be a blue wire in your case, or a black. At this point, we're going to take the labels that were included with your new thermostat, and we're going to put them to the corresponding letter, not the wire color, but the letter in which the wire came off of. And remember, the wire colored may not always correspond to the letter that you removed it from. We will take them out one at a time, put the label on them, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the existing thermostat. Be very careful when you take it out not to knock off the labels. And here's a little hint. Before you get started removing the wires and labeling it, if you have a camera or a smartphone that has a camera, take a picture of it then you have a visual reference of where the wires were originally. Okay, so next we'll take, and we have a wire that is marked W right here. It just happens to be the white wire that's marked W. And I'll take my little screwdriver, loosen the screw, remove the wire from the terminal. And remember, I remove them one at a time. And because that was on the W terminal, I will take the corresponding W label, and apply it on the wire. Now we've gone through and one at a time removed each wire and labeled it from where it was removed from on the old thermostat. We found one that wasn't hooked up on the old thermostat. We're not going to put a label on it because it was not hooked up. We are not going to use that on our new thermostat. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to remove the two screws here and carefully remove the back plate from the old thermostat. Remember carefully so you don't knock the labels off. Now we've removed 
the old thermostat. Included with the new thermostat in the battery compartment is a little bag that has screws and mollies with it for you to conveniently mount it on the wall. We've taken the covers off of our new thermostat and now if you look at the back there are four mounting holes on the new thermostat. Taking the new thermostat, put it approximately where you want it, take your level, make sure it's level, make sure the thermostat is now where you're going to finally mount it, take a pen or a pencil or whatever you're going to use to mark the holes, mark each hole so you can take when you remove this, go and drill a pilot hole or use an awl. Then you'll install the mollies as we have here in those holes. Take the wires, bring them up because they will fit through the back of the thermostat here. And mount the new thermostat to the wall. So now that I've moved the wires up here, I have a screw that's ready to mount in. I will take my screwdriver and mount it in the wall. Here's a note. When you move the wires up on top, you may want to fan them out in the order that they're going to be hooked up on the new thermostat. That makes it easier to run them behind the thermostat. When you go to hook them up, then they're in the proper order. And you can simply put them in the corresponding terminals and hook them up. Okay, here's another little trick. If you notice that the wires were cut a little bit longer for the old thermostat, we like about a quarter inch of copper showing. So if you have stripped back wires that are stripped back quite a bit, trim them back to a quarter inch. And we simply took the G wire and we put it back into the G terminal. We're going to take our small screwdriver and we're going to tighten, holding the wire in so it goes in the terminal all the way. We're going to tighten that down. We just snug it down. We don't need to tight over tighten it. After we're done tightening it down, we give a little bit of a tug on the wire to make sure that it's not broken and it's in there securely. We're going to follow the same plan with each of the wires that are marked from the old thermostat. Now this orange wire that wasn't used in the uh, old thermostat, we're going to simply tuck behind the thermostat because we're not going to use it. The second one we just put in, the first one was the G, which is our fan control. The next one is the R, which is our control wire. In this case, we have a standard system where we have one R control wire. We're going to put it in either the RH or the RC. We prefer the RH. Just go ahead and screw it in, just like you would before. And if you notice, while you're looking at it, there's a little piece of wire between the RH and RC. It ties the two together. So it really doesn't matter which one that you put in. Again, just snug it down, pull on it to make sure it's okay, and then follow through with each of the corresponding wires. Now that we've completed our wiring of our thermostat, we need to put our attention to the switches. We have two switches on this thermostat. We have the first one over here that says normal or HP. That stands for our normal system, which we're using, which is gas, oil, propane, or electric system. The HP refers to a heat pump, which is not ours. So we've taken the switch and switched it over to the normal position. The second switch is gas or electric. This will depend on your system. If it's gas, oil, or propane, you put it in the gas. If it's electric, meaning that the way the heat is created is with electricity and not oil, gas, or propane, then it goes over to the electric spot. So ours is gas, so we're just going to flip it on over there right now to the gas. And then we're going to take and install our three batteries into this thermostat. It's important that you install batteries even if you have a C or power wire. And you notice our display is not on. That's because we've still, even though we have a C wire, we've left the power to the system off because we're not finished the install yet. The first battery goes one direction. These two front batteries here will go the opposite direction of the rear battery. You just notice that when we installed that last battery, our thermostat came on. Even though we just installed the batteries, every time we change the switches, which we did, we need to hit the reset. 
we've included with every thermostat a reset pusher. Just happens to be the cover. Take the corner of the cover and simply push the reset button just for a second. At that point, you'll see the whole screen light up every character and come back on. You've now installed your wires, set your switches, reset the thermostat after you put the batteries in, and we're ready to go. We have one more step left before we turn the power back on, and that's our HVAC setup. With the system in the off mode, we simply take and press the menu button, and down on the lower right corner of the screen, it'll say HVAC setup. We press that, and since we're in a normal system, gas, oil, propane, or electric, it will come up with a one, two, three, four, or five, which can be changed simply by pressing the up and down arrow buttons. Refer to the manual for your type of system. Since we only have a W and a Y for our, our stages, which are referred to in the manual, that's one stage of heat, one stage of cool, we are a type one system. Since we verified that, we simply press the house. Since we've completed the setup, we're now going to put our covers back on. The battery cover has the markings for how the batteries go in, so you know that that one goes on the bottom. We've completed all the steps, the wiring, setting the switches, and setting up the HVAC type. We've put our covers back on. Now it's time to go ahead and turn the power back on to the system. When you do that, make sure that the system is in off and there's no fan turned on. Turn the power back on, come back on up. You'll notice that there's two buttons on the side. The top button is the mode button. This tells the thermostat whether to go in heat or cool or off. The bomb button controls the fan. Now on our system, we had a G wire. That's a fan wire. If you have one on yours also, then you can take and control the fan with the bottom button. So if you, a great way to test it is to simply press the fan button. You'll hear a little click, and you'll notice that on comes on the screen underneath a little flashing fan. You should hear the fan on your system turn on. It will run continuously until you press the button again. You'll hear a click, and you'll notice that that little fan indicator is turned off. If this tests OK, Let's continue on and test it in heat. Let's press the mode. And if you notice now, it says heat down here. Our target temperature is 70, and it's 73 in the house. So what we need to do is run the target temperature up with the arrows to a couple degrees above what it is in the room. So we now know our target temperature down here is 76, and the house is 73. If we look at the word heat that was on solid before, it's flashing. When you have your backlight on, if the word heat or cool is flashing, that means the thermostat is calling or telling your system to make heat or cool. So the furnace should come on now. Be aware, if you have a gas, oil, or propane furnace, it may take up to a minute before the system starts, the fan turns on. So be patient. Give it two or three minutes. Make sure that you're getting heat. After you've confirmed that you, your system is working properly in the heat mode, come back, press the mode again. This will turn it to off. Even though we're on a conventional system, I recommend waiting five minutes before you check it in the air conditioning mode. Now we're going to test the cool. Be aware that if it's winter time where you're at and it's very cold outside, below 40 degrees, your air conditioner may not run because it is cold outside, it has an auto shutoff. So we're going to simply press the mode button. We'll go from off to cool. If we notice with the backlight on, the word cool is on, meaning we're in cool mode, or air conditioning mode, but it's not flashing. That's because the target temperature is 74, and we're already lower than that, 72.5. So we simply take and run the target temperature down, below the room temperature, I took it down to 69, and now we'll see that we're 69 degrees is our target temp, our room temperature is 72, and the word cool is now flashing. That means that the air conditioner should be running. Again, be patient, give it a minute or two to come on. Once it comes on, let it run for at least five minutes. Make sure you're getting cool air out of it. 
After you've let it run, simply press the mode and you'll go back to off. Here's a neat little tip. If you're in one mode and you turn it off, rather than going through all the modes, if you simply press the off, you'll go back to the last mode you were in. So in conclusion, let's go back over the steps we just followed. We turned off the power to our old system. We confirmed this if we had a fan by running the fan until we heard it go off. After that, we removed the old thermostat until we saw the wires. Remember, there may be more than one layer. At that point, if we had a digital camera, we took a picture of it. We then took the labels that come with the new thermostat, and we labeled each wire individually from where they were hooked up, not the color, but from what terminal they were hooked up on on the old thermostat. We removed the old thermostat, installed the new thermostat, hooked up each wire, set the switches, installed the batteries. After we installed the batteries, we reset the thermostat and we did the HVAC setup. We installed the covers and we tested the system to make sure it was working properly. Now there's a couple places you can go if you have more questions any of the steps that we did. Number one, included with the thermostat, there are manuals that go over these steps. The second place is you can go to our website or call our technical support hotline.